Hello, everyone. Uh, so Celeste and... Hi, Mateo here. All right, and we have Matt Van Wee from Miami on Monday morning. Thank you, Matt, for joining us. Happy to be here. Awesome. Um, so Matt, I know you have a <clears throat> great story about uh, how you got into you know, the real estate industry and everything. So we wanted to kind of start off by chatting a little bit about that, and then we'll dive into the Miami market um, after. So how did sure. you first uh, decide that you wanted to be in real estate? Yeah, great question. So it's an interesting story because I really didn't decide at the time. So, you know, my, my story is that my dad uh, was a real estate developer starting in the 1970s, um, building a company through the 80s and the 90s. So I kind of grew up in a real estate family, if you will. And so when I got to college and had to pick a career um, at that time, I kept thinking I want to do something different, right? I don't want to just do what my dad did. I want to be different and blaze my own trail. So um, I had this dream of going to law school, but I wasn't sure 100%. And so I decided to focus on just finishing school and then making a decision. So I did. And then my dad ultimately talked me into going to real estate school, getting licensed, getting into the business, basically against my will at the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I followed his advice. I gave it a try. I started way back in 2003 um, in Timeshare, um, which was not what I loved, but it was a great training experience uh, in sales You know, to get into to real estate. I ultimately transitioned over to general brokerage. At the time, I was with the Century 21 office. <clears throat> excuse me. And I had no clue what I was doing. Um, I had the benefit, thank goodness, of my dad with a lot of years in the industry, uh, who was able to help me with, with, you know, training and, and presentation techniques. And I'll never forget that my first few months, I didn't sell anything. I was like really down and depressed about it. And he said, okay, I'm the customer. Walk me through your routine. And what he saw was I was showing tons and tons of properties and I was kind of getting people confused by showing too much. And I wasn't really asking them um, for the order. I wasn't asking them to purchase, you know, to make that decision. And so what he told me was show the property. Okay. Show your top three, no more than five. Then when you finish with the client, you, you ask the client, which property that client wants to take. And so when I started doing that, um, I started actually making my first few sales and then, uh, rose to the ranks of top producer status for the, the small office at the time. And, um, I worked full time um, from 2003 uh, all the way until 2009 when we had a, a market shift, obviously, um, at, that, at that time. And then I decided to be become a lawyer uh, and scratch that itch so I didn't have regrets later. Um, I became a real estate lawyer. Uh, I learned a lot. It was a great experience. I was able to do a lot of real estate closings, residential and commercial uh, for buyers and sellers and, and banks and developers. Um, as well as some real estate litigation. And then I decided to come to Miami uh, because the University of Miami had a master's in real estate program and I got accepted and I jumped into that head first because I love real estate. Uh, and then I fell in love with the city, ultimately decided to make the move down to Miami full time. And then when I got here, I said, you know what? You know, I, yeah, I became this real estate lawyer, but my passion is real estate sales, real estate brokerage. I can't deny that. I've always wanted to have my own operation in, in South Florida. I'm finally here. I have the ability to, to transition back and really do it. Yeah. I woke up one day and I made that decision. And, you know, so my, my story is, you know, I started in sales. I transitioned to real estate legal work then transitioned back to being uh, an agent. And that's where I am now. And, you know, I, and I love it. So that's my story. And you, I think you were from South Carolina originally, right? Yeah, originally, correct. From coastal South Carolina near the, the Charleston area, correct. I remember that because I was born in South Carolina. <laughs> um, and apparently I had a very thick accent for the first few years of my life. Um, Where did that go? 
When I you know it now, do I sound like a New Yorker at this point? Uh, but, uh, you, you do. I I just noticed though that I'm the fastest talker of the three of us, so now I understand why. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes. So you're right. We both have some Southern roots, and Mateo's Mateo's Philly through and through. So. Well, like I say, I am Southern. I am as South Southern, Southern as you can town. get. Southern Italian, <laughs> <laughs> so that qualifies for something. <laughs> But yeah, I remember that when we were first chatting, I was like, oh, he's all right. We both have South Carolina roots. So um, yeah. now what, what type of uh, real estate do you like really specialize in at this point? I know you do some, <clears throat> but then you do some, um, some other kind of uh, what's to me seems like way more complicated. I think you mentioned like hotels and stuff at, at one point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, so my answer to that is I do what the client needs. And um, I am by no means a, a commercial specialist. Um, I have gotten involved in some of those deals from time to time um, when the clients need that, uh, in particular hotels and office space. Um, the lion's share of what I do uh, on a day to day basis would be in the luxury residential market, um, including both condos and apartments, as well as uh, single family. And that would range from the, the resale product to the new construction uh, product. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, most of it's going to be things um, here in the Brickell area, for example, in Miami, which is our financial district, um, other things on Miami Beach and other, other parts of uh, Miami. And then from time to time, I'll have clients who um, have a need uh, outside of Miami, but still in the South Florida area, particularly uh, places like Boca Raton, um, Fort Lauderdale, you know, Hollywood Beach, um, you know, areas like that. But, but the bulk of it would be residential, condo and single family, um, resale and new construction. Yeah, awesome. Um, it's, I mean, Miami, is it still like, is the market still crazy or is it kind of calmed down a little bit with interest rates and stuff? Or what are you guys seeing? Yeah, great question um, that everybody's asking. And I think a lot of people have different opinions. Um, I can tell you what I'm seeing, you know, from my, my position. I think th there's no question the market here, is, it's still a good market. It's still very active, um, still very competitive. Uh, I think without question, the market has begun to what I would call normalize uh, to a degree, particularly with interest rates bumping up a little bit yeah. uh, to kind of normalize the pricing and, and you know, what, uh, what I would have referred to as almost like a feeding frenzy, right? You know, last year. So um, I actually welcome that. I think it's actually a healthier uh, environment to work in because um, as I told one of my clients last week, we were looking at a property in, in Boca Raton and, you know, we, we finished the showing and we're standing in the kitchen and she said, you know, what do you think? Is this still a good time to buy and I said, it is. And, I, and I'll, I'll tell you why. I said, because if we were standing here this time last year, there would be like five other couples in here, you know, looking at the same house. Yeah. We would be racing to get the paperwork in, you know, within the next like five minutes, you know, <laughs> hoping, we had a sh hoping we had a shot, right? If we were like yeah, yeah, 50K sure. over asking. So yeah. I, I think it's a, it's a more normal market, at least here. Um, it is still a, a good and very competitive market. I mean, I'll be honest, I, I, I'm still seeing multiple deals on the table for properties that are priced correctly. Um, you know, with the interest rates, you know, that part of your question, I think I'll say two things on that. You know, one, you know, I, rates go up and they go down um, and ultimately people adjust and they just, be, they just get used to wherever rates are. Much like a year, year and a half ago, people got, uh, spoiled with 3% rates, um, they got used to that. Uh, so I think as we move further along and we get into next year, people get comfortable and they get used to rates being a little higher, you know, and um, for, the, for, the, for the first time in a long time, we're seeing rate buy downs, uh, yeah. which I think is a powerful tool on other topic. But um, I think that's a tool we're going to see used more frequently, especially going into 2023. Uh, we'll see some more seller concessions like that to help you know, move the ball along. I, I agree. We're, we're seeing the same conversations happening Definitely. here. We were just talking yeah. to a lender about it the other day um, in terms of buy downs. And um, 
I think it was actually Donald who said, you marry the house, but you date the rage. Was there it you Donald? Go. Yep, or am that's I Donald. It? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so and I love that. And I've used it a number of times at this point. So yeah. like, you know, when rates drop in the future, potentially you can always refinance at that point. But first house I bought was at 6%. And I remember thinking that was good. That's dating right. me a little bit, but yeah. um, I guess, but I, I thought that was good back then. So, I mean, yeah. the, the 3% and stuff, like there's no way that could last forever yeah so, and that's yeah. just that's not, not where we are right now yeah. you know, if you want if you want the property whether yep. you know in miami or in new york this is where we are right now yeah. and i think that you know adjusting like i think yeah absolutely spot on you just have to get a little more creative at the end of the day yeah. about how to structure things so um so now let me ask you what is probably um the best part of your job and what would you say is the worst part of your job <laughs> It's a real estate agent. <laughs> and no lying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is, uh, yeah, we'll, Charm, we'll give yeah. you an, uh, yeah, <laughs> no, no. You know, that's a great question. Um, wow. Okay. I'm going to think on the spot. I'm going to say the best part, um, what I like the most would be connecting with people. I love to connect with people. Um, and as you guys know, you do it too, um, especially in a market like New York, um, you know, we're multicultural. We have people coming from all over the world, you know, here, just like in New York. And so you have an opportunity to, to meet and build meaningful relationships with a lot of different people. And it's not always a client, you know, it could even be your, your closing attorney, it could be your lender, it could be, you know, the, 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 a rental company who you refer people to, you, you meet so many people, uh, and you connect with them and build relationships. And just the things that you learn from people, and and where that takes you, you know, it, it, I, it fascinates me. And so I love to, to meet and network. And I love kind of being out on the front line, being out and about and, and, and going to events and, you know, and, and being with people in that respect. So that'll be my favorite part. Um, the worst part, the most challenging part. Okay. Um, I would say, you know, I would just, this is going to sound general, I guess, but um, I would say, having to really do a good job of, as we all do, you know, keeping yourself up and not letting it bother you when maybe somebody doesn't respond timely or somebody just ghost you, you know, in a transaction. Um, everybody deals with that from time to time. And, you know, like you, you learned. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about dating the rate. Now we're talking about dating and you know, people ghosting. Yeah. Me, so. <laughs> oh, it happens. <laughs> but no, that's a good. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah sure. no, I think yeah. we've all experienced that and it's very frustrating. And you're like, but I thought I had this great connection with this client. And now they're just not responding. Yeah. And it could just be, it's not necessarily personal. It could just be that they've been busy and they get distracted or yeah. maybe your sure, email sure. went to spam. That happens too. But right. it's, um, but sure. yeah, I, I very often, I, yeah, I'm going to go back to that dating comment about, uh, you know, this, this industry. <laughs> Yeah. in the dynamics sometimes. I think it's a good one. Um, so now um, our last question, and then we'll let you go and, and get running with your um, Monday. What is, and this is two part, what is your favorite spot in Miami? And then what is your favorite spot in New York City when you're visiting us? Easy question to answer. So <clears throat> I will say that I'm, I'm gonna, I'll start with New York. Yeah. Because obviously Miami is my spot, and and when I'm in New York, I'm I'm, I'm visiting, and I don't know it as well as you guys. But um, so I, I'm a big towel guy. I I love going to Tao for for dinner and, and drinks. So whenever I'm there, uh, I try to to go to Tao and you know soak in the the environment and and you know really really do that when I'm in New York. Also, I found this little Turkish restaurant. Yeah. And I. Yeah, I, I believe it's in Soho, and it's called the Antique Garage. Have you guys been there? No. Oh, yeah, I okay, yeah. We're, I have not. Mateo is a little more of a socialite than me these days, but we'll have to hey. check that out. Okay. Yeah, it's a great spot. It's in Soho. It's called Antique Garage. Um, it's so funny because one of my clients is really good friends with this awesome Turkish restaurant owner slash chef, and she just launched a place here. We got the grand opening over the weekends, I took a client, um, and they know that restaurant too, but it's called Antique Garage New York. So I would say New York, Tao, you know, it's more mainstream, but I love it. Um, and I like to pop into Antique Garage and try the baklava because I love Turkish food. Awesome. We had a list um, 
Okay. We're going to have to check that out. Thank you for that suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, here in Miami. So I would say my favorite uh, go-to restaurant, it's, a, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty unique because uh, it's kind of like a Roaring Twenties, Great Gatsby, you know, throwback um, era. But it's inside the um, Faena Hotel, um, 33rd Street in Collins, Oceanfront, Miami Beach. And it's just an extravagant old hotel from the 40s that an Argentinian developer named Ar Alan Faena um, revitalized and brought back to life um, to a degree of great splendor. Inside the hotel is what I think is the best restaurant in Miami. It's called Los Fuegos. Los Fuegos. Um, you know, it's, it's an Argentinian. It's beef, it's fish, and they have, you know, live music. This guy's singing Sinatra, and it's just incredible service and atmosphere. So, yeah, Los Fuegos is my go-to restaurant lounge spot in Miami. Um, I've never yeah. been Argentina before, but my husband's told me that it's some of the best food. It's he's amazing. Ever had. It's yeah, got wine. Yeah, you that, too. Oh, yeah. it's got wine. Yeah. Now, I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> I'm there. Yep. But you're going to use an excuse to get to Miami. Just as certain as I know who to refer to Miami, you know, I know where yeah. to eat in Miami, Matt. Yeah, Thank you. So right. And in yes. Gosh, we're going to have to uh, check that out too. Love Turkey. And you were in my home. That is my buzzer going off now. Somebody may must be here. So I'm going to close this out and, um, and just say thank you, Matt, again for joining us. Um, we have a go-to in Miami, Absolutely. whoever we have that opportunity mm -hmm. and we hope you come visit us in New York again sometime soon. Yep. And, um, if, if, uh, Mateo disappears, I'm going to know where he went now. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Always right. Thank you. I hope to, hope to see you soon. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye.